In the previous lesson, we looked at applying a filter to an image using Filter Gallery, but that's not really where its power is. So let's go back to that same image in your exercise file and open that one up. Make it a little bit bigger, double click on the hand tool, and let's go back into the Filter Gallery. You will notice that the first thing I see is Filter Gallery, and that's because that's the last thing that I did in the previous lesson. If I click that button, it will reapply to this image exactly what that image had applied to it, which was the cutout filter. But I don't want to do that. I want to come down here to reaccess the filter gallery, or if I click this up here while holding the Alt key down, it will reopen the filter gallery for me. And we're kind of back where we were from the previous lesson. Let's turn cutoff off for a second. It makes it render faster when I reduce the size. Let's come down here and get that down to a little bit more of a manageable size for us. Okay, we'll stop there. Let's turn cutout back on. Image size determines rendering. Sometimes it takes longer if you've got large images. Okay, I like cutout, but I want to see what would happen if I do something else to the image. So here's the power of this. I could come over here now and click, but all that's really going to do is redraw it using colored pencil. That's not what I want to do. What I want to do is apply two filters to the same image. So let's go back to Cutout and wait for it to render one more time. What we're going to do is we're going to come down here and click the New button right there. Now that's for a new filter layer. By default, you're going to get another Cutout. It's just going to copy whatever one was selected. But the power here is now I can select this one, leave this one alone, and apply cutout and say colored pencil and see what both of them look like together. That's where the power is in this program. We could try anything we wanted to in combination or what we could also do is we can come over here and we can turn maybe that one off to see what underpainting looks like all by itself. And you've got all this control going. Let's turn that one back on again. And what we'll do is let's close artistic, try something else. The sketch filters are kind of fun to work with. All kinds of really neat ones up here. Chalk and charcoal. Oh, understand one other thing. The order of these will determine how the image looks too, just like the order of layers in Photoshop. So you can drag these around and see what it looks like if, say, cutouts on the top. Here's water paper. That's kind of a fun one. We could continue this process. We could add another filter layer, play around with all of the controls up here and get exactly what we want to see. And then eventually you like it, you click the OK button. But we still have one problem. We're not really working as smart as we can. So in the next lesson, what we're going to do is work just a little bit smarter. On to the next.